Hey guys, it's Billy here. Um, welcome back to another video. And today I'm doing something different. As you can see, I am not at my desk. And I'm also not at my computer. I'm recording from my Canon camera. This is a painting video. Um, I'm going to be starting painting tutorials. I'm trying to reach out to viewers and try and get you guys to try and paint along with me. Because uh, before I would just do paint time lapses, but now I'm going to be doing Bob Ross style videos. I'm not doing the whole three painting whatever setup. I'm just going to have a drawing, we're going to paint it, and that's that. Speaking of Bob, I will be right back because I just realized we don't have our little friend over here. So I got I got our little friend. Uh, he's gonna sit. Where where can we put you? He can sit. You can sit right up against. Ooh, that might not be. Boys, all right. You can stand right there. You're gonna lean up against my computer. So basically, I'm gonna show you guys how you can improve your drawing skills so you can make something that's as good as this. This is Martin Mullins. He uploads once a week on Wednesdays about the building process of the Marble Machine X, which is a musical instrument that uh, uses marbles to play the instruments. So this was a screenshot I took of him from one of his videos, and it was just this still shot of him. It was slow motion of him. He jumped in the air, and I just thought that that was so resembled the image of what a rock star represents, so I drew it. But enough of that. We're going to move on to the main topic of the video today which is this so here I have a drawing a pencil drawing of the Mayflower because as you all know this year 2020 is the 400th anniversary of Plymouth being founded when basically when the pilgrims came and landed on Plymouth Rock so here as granted as this year, the 400th celebration didn't really go as planned because of the whole uh, COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, I started drawing this because I was going to decorate my car with paintings um, for graduation, but it turns out I didn't really couldn't think of a way of how we could attach this without it blowing away. So I kind of just sat here in my room um, up against my bureau. So I decided why don't we do a painting tutorial. I I've actually taken a picture prior to filming this and I'm going to crop it and I will post a link to this picture in the description of the video. And this will be a thing when I do these videos. I will have a drawing that I've already drawn and I will put that photo link in the description of the video so you can print it out prior to watching the video and that way you can paint along with me now granted that's not the best quality type of paper to paint on because it's just printer paper but it's better than nothing so basically I'm gonna put some the colors that I'm gonna be using on the bottom of the screen like right here um, but I'm also gonna list them off as well that way I'm not stealing from Bob Sorry, Bob, I'm not stealing from you whatsoever, I promise. But basically, these are the colors we have. I'm going to hold them up here on the palette. So here, this one, it's this little bottle here. It's called Burnt Orange. That is followed by Aqua Green, Turquoise. This is, There's two here. These two here, that I only had this much left of Light Blue. That's going to be used for the sky. Uh, as you can see, but we also have cerulean blue next to it, which is an alternative because I have a little bit more of that, followed by phthalo blue, and then down here we have just regular titanium white right here, followed by unbleached titanium, that's what we're going to use for the sails of the ship. Um, we have Burnt Umber, which is just brown, your standard brown, and then we have Ivory Black right here, which is a standard black as well. And we're going to mix them up with our paint knife, our palette knife, whatever you want to call it. Basically what Bob uses. 
Uh, I also have brushes and my paint caddy right here, my brush caddy filled with water. I don't use brush cleaner, I don't have any of that. With an assortment of different brushes ranging from fine line brushes right here to really big brushes that can cover uh, lots of area on the surface. As well as medium sized ones as well, like this. As you can see. So, let's get started, shall we? I also have, oh, that's right, I forgot to say this. Uh, I also have some Brilliant Red, that's the name of this paint, and that will be used for this flag right up here is a British flag. I didn't draw in the lines of the flag. I figured I'll just paint in the lines, so that's what the red is for. It's for the red stripes in that. So, let's begin. So I'm going to start off, I say we should start off with the sky, so I'm going to go over to that, and I'm going to take, we're going to take some of the sky blue in the turquoise and we're going to mix it with some white. All right, so we're going to take some of this here, you know, you basically you take your knife and you want to take it just like that and we're going to put it right in the middle. That's why I have the space in the middle here so we can mix. I'm going to take, ooh, not that much white. That much white, it'll lighten that up way too quickly. See? White and black are very very easy colors to change other colors. They black can dark if you use way too much black it will just make it all muddy and dark and it'll just darken it too quickly for you and you won't be able to fix it so you'd have to remix the colors. Alright we need a little bit more blue. I'm actually gonna take tad of this darker blue here, the phthalo blue. And you can mix it to however you like, but I'm just going by the image, because I'm, I'm an impressionist painter. I paint what I see. I like that. Back up to our picture, and I am going to grab this big brush right here, this really big brush. Well, it's not really that big, but I mean, it's big and what you want to do, what you want to do, you want to take your, your brush, right, and you want to take the paint, and you just want to, you just want to go little X's like this, and that way it gets the paint on both sides of the brush. And that way it really lathers it up. So we're just going to, we're going to go up here. Oh, I forgot this brush is terrible. <laughs> All right, this uh, this is fine. That's fine. It's fine. I'm gonna get this paint on that brush, and we're gonna try again. Now this also here. I'm gonna hold the paper while we apply this. My brush is also kind of sticking to it, and if we look, it gets lighter as we go down. So I should be able to actually. I can. That's right. That's what this is for. You mix the colors as you go down. So look, we can start with dark, and look at that. It just, the gradient, it just goes right down. Lighter and lighter until you hit the horizon, where it's really wet. Oof. All this stuff dry. Dang it. Aw. We just get right in there, right into the cracks, the crevices, all the little white spaces. Just want to get in there and make sure we grab some of that gesso or else we end up with a really dark blue straight line in there. We do not want those. Those aren't good. I'm actually using phthalo blue now um, because that way I can just mix it right up on the paper. It helps. It helps a lot. Granted my brush is sticking like crazy because it's, it's thick stuff. We start at the top and then we work our way down. As we work our way down, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. I didn't go. Okay, so I'm back. I don't know how much time went by until I realized my camera is 
SD card f was full. So that stunk. Sorry if I just somehow just stopped talking. Um, that was weird. So back to painting. I just spent tons of time deleting multiple f clips of trial runs of like s piano and violin assignments from during the um, what's it called? Uh, at home learning. I'm just adding in white here. It's going to lighten everything up and plus it's going to fill in more of the gaps. Also, during that time, all my gesso is fully dried, so mo most of it. Other other spots are just really, really tacky, meaning it's sort of dry, but not really. So this sucks. I uh, gotta go over that again. Um, other than that, um, I think we're gonna do the water last, I think. Actually, you know what? We can do the water now if we so please. So. Oh, that's way. Ah, uh, see, this is what I mean. Here is a perfect. Hold on, you. I can't tell if you guys can see this properly. This is a perfect example right here. Here, we're gonna just uh, zoom in. See this? I thought I grabbed just enough black, but no, I put too much black. So now I have a dark blue black mess right here. So now I gotta start over. So that was a waste. Um, here, we're just gonna. That's the color I wanted right there, a dark navy color. Um, and yes, I know I just grabbed the paint with my brush, but that's fine. I need a lot of paint on here. Uh, we're going to zoom back out also. That way you guys can see the whole painting. Um, I'm only going to go down to about here on the painting, I believe. I'm not going to do all the way down where you can't see off camera. Uh, but we're going to do that right now. So... I'm just going to get that paint on there. I'm going to put some more blue in here. More phthalo blue. By the way, that was phthalo and black I used. Uh, up here, there's going to be some white wash, white water. I feel like this needs to be lightened in some areas. So I'm going to... Well, that's way too much white. Again, did the same exact thing. As you can see, too much white equals intense lightening of a color, and it does not help at all. I mean, sometimes it does, but I mean, we're just going to see this paint is still kind of wet, so we can kind of use this color. It kind of mixes in, and it lightens it slowly instead of just plain white on the canvas, and oh, now it's too light. And then you're using more paint to fix it. You're not supposed to scrub, but you know what? I'm doing it anyway. Alright, so we... Here, we're gonna... I'm gonna look at this real quickly. We're gonna start... Again, we're gonna start down here. I already have brown on my palette knife. So, we're gonna take the brown, this burnt umber. Right? It is burnt. <laughs> Gotta double check my paint here. Alright, burnt umber. Um, we're gonna put it down he here. Jeez. And we're also going to, literally, all right, I don't know if you could see, right here, there is the smallest amount of black on the tip. I don't know if you could see it. Oh, there we go. See it? It's right here above my fingertip. That is all you need to color this a darker brown that is literally all you need you don't need any more than that that brown with that little bit of black did this it literally it darkened it to this color see the difference on that so it's not fully black but it's much darker brown and that brown we are going to use 
to our advantage. I'm going to take this small little brush here. I'm going to do the same thing. Lather it up in the paint here. Here we go. Just like this. Now we're going to come to the underside of the boat here. Well, not the underside of the boat. It's not the underside of the boat. Uh, we're going to come right here to the bow of the boat. And I'm going to quickly switch over to the picture. And we're going to just put that in right here, right along this edge. I'm going to try and... I hope I'm not blocking the camera with my face. I'm pretty sure I'm not. Now, there's a line here. This is a beam here that supports the front of the bow with the rest of the boat, with the bottom of the boat. So we're going to go around that because that's a different color. It's a lighter color. Here, I'm going to put my palette down so I can do this. This is yeah. This is dry. I can put my hand on the paint. I've I, I've done that sometimes. I don't test or check to see if my paint is dry in some areas. So when I go to put my hand there, so I can stabilize the brush while I'm painting, uh, it turns out I forget that it's wet, and then the whole right here of my hand just is. <laughs> just covered in blue or black or brown or white paint it's it's lovely now I've actually accidentally gone over some of the that little piece that I said not to go over and we're gonna fix that right now so basically all you want to do you want to take a piece of paper towel you want to wet it with some water and you just go along where that was supposed to be And basically, you can just pick that paint up. Some of it, I mean, granted, I'm trying to be careful. I don't want to take too much off because then it looks weird. Uh, not just that, but that it's not in the right spot as well. So now, what we want to do, we want to take that same color dark brown and we want to bring it down the side of this beam that I said not to color that dark brown color because this is going to be the side of that beam. It's going to be like a sh the shadow of it. So see here how we have this? And then we can also, we can drag some of that over as well. Like this. So it creates like a little corner here. It's not completely that same dark color as up here, but it's just a bit of it is there. So it takes that color. All right, we're going to change this. this. We're just going to add in some brown here. Okay, so now what we want to do, so I'm going to bring up the palette again. Um, bring this up. I'm going to zoom out here. We want to take some brown, okay, more than that, um, like that much. We're going to put it down here. Now, actually just a tad more. That's all the white you need right there, if you could see that. Hopefully that's all the white you need. I might need a tad bit more, who knows. We'll find out. Nope, that's way more white than we needed. That's actually perfect. That is, that's the exact amount of white you needed, was that just that little tiny bit. This is going to be the main color for the body of the boat. Well, for most of the body of the boat, um, some spots have some shading. And you want to, when you do this, when you scrape the paint up, see how it creates like a bead? I don't know if you could, hold on. See, there's a bead of paint. So basically when you, back it out again, you want to press down and you just flatten it. So basically when you go to put it back on the board, you flatten it so it gets all that paint as flat as possible right here um, so it gets it all like about 97 percent of it off the knife you gotta wipe the stuff that can't you can't get off uh, 
off of the knife. So we're going to zoom back in here. We're going to go down here with that color I just made with some of the burnt umber and the white. And we're going to go, actually I'm going to go back to the picture. Just along like this. I'm just going to paint around this little sp splotch of shadow here and fill in all the white spots around it. Now here there's some pencil marks. Here that's actually shading. So that's going to be a darker color. But we can skip over that and we can go right in here and just fill that in as another color. This line needs to be a darker color. Actually, I think this whole piece needs to be a lighter color. I'm going to add some of that burnt orange and some unbleached titanium to the brown. Uh, a little bit more burnt orange because I need it to be like a yellowy brown. Oh, the burnt orange is starting to uh, harden. So we get more of like a orangey tone. Ah, there we go. Like this. See how it changed? That's brown. This is more of an orangey brown. We can actually just go right over that brown. So we gotta remember that there's a line right above this little section of brown that we need to paint over with a dark color. I'm gonna do this light color over here. And again, we're gonna avoid this beam because this beam is like a, a cream colored brownish tone. It still like has a brown hue to it but it's much lighter than this. I'm taking some of the burnt umber with the unbleached titanium. So it's basically this and this. It's more of the unbleached titanium and we're gonna just mix it up down here. Um, oh, I messed up, hold on. Hold on. I wet the tip of that's a horrible sound. Okay. Sorry for your ears. And we're just gonna pull this right the way to open. But as you can see, we fixed it. So now it's just like in the image. And then I can go back, since I only used barely any of the other, of uh, that dark color, I can kind of go back to the color that was over here and then fix the curve of this side as well. Just like that. And there we go, that's fixed. Okay, we're gonna go back to the image. I'm gonna look. Okay. Hi, I'm back. Uh, it might not seem like I am back, but I. Uh, because it's just a continuous video, but it's actually been a few hours. It is currently 9 o'clock at night. Um, I did not expect to be doing this this late. Um, after a while, uh, because my camera battery died, um, that's probably why I suddenly stopped talking. Uh, not only that, but then my computer died. Uh, so I had to wait for those both to charge up. So I did a little bit of work here and there. I painted this section here. I painted the masts, the lower part of the masts of the sails. I painted here. And then I repainted this part in here a different color. It's a lighter color that actually matches the image better. So we're, we are going to continue now. <coughs> I'm going to look at this image quickly. Also, my paint has some dried up a bit so that's kind of sucks kind of upset about that so I'm right now I'm currently mixing up uh, a ratio of like three to one three being brown and one being black and this color is going to be going right here as a shadow 
So I'm just quickly mixing that up. I'm going to be editing a lot of this out, so it's going to be jumps. Lots of jumps. So it's going to be like, alright, I'm going to show you how to do this. And then it's going to jump to it being finished. Basically, that's what I'm going to do to save time because I don't need this being a three hour painting tutorial video. It's supposed to be half an hour, kind of like Bob Ross. I, he just paints really fast. <clears throat> He's a speed painter. Um, so I'm taking this brush here and we're just going to put this right here. And this is a shadow from one of these, uh, from this, uh, what's it called? <coughs> Rope ladder that's uh, attached to the side of the ship. I'm just going to bring this down. Let's see. What else can we fix quickly? Uh, I think that little shadow near where I just was painting, we can fix as well on while we're on the subject of it. More paint. Oh. Yeah, this color does not match, but we're gonna just blend it in just like this. So you just bring a little bit of it in, like that, and boom, it's blended. Look at that. I'm gonna go in behind the rope ladders. Some reason I still don't have enough paint. I don't know how I'm gonna do these planks either, because these are individual planks. There are lines in between them, so I'm gonna have to figure that out. But um, I don't know. We'll figure it out as we go along. All right. Oh, it's literally just like, oh, it's just another color for the uh, planks. Oh, that's convenient. Thanks, you picture. Thank you, picture. Thank you, Mr. Picture. Um, here, I'm going to take some of this color. I'm taking the color I was just using, um, and I'm mixing more. I'm taking some of that, and I'm adding white to it, so I still have the original color. I need it, and we're going to put it right here. because the sun is hitting this part of the wood. See, this is in shade, this is in sun. That's another thing you can do with painting, is you can add that and it adds more detail and depth to whatever you're trying to paint. Also, I'm gonna show you a technique for doing the sails because the sails aren't just white or whatever. No, they're like a cloth like color. They're like um like just undyed cloth, like a cream color. But if you look at the picture, the reference picture, um that that they aren't just cream either. If you look towards the bottom of them, they're more of a of that tan color, right? Like a shadow, but up top it becomes more of a cream. So we're going to replicate that as well. I'll show you how to do that. I don't know how we're going to do the uh, the rigging. I might do that. I might not do that in paint. I might do that with a pen. That might make it look better. So it's not as sloppy and like thick of a line. Uh, here, we're also going to go up here. Can I have the paint? Thank you. It's, you're not like a fountain pen that's not going to dispense the ink to the tip of the pen. Like, 
somebody who's over on my desk. It was a fucking nightmare. And then I'll, after he did want to give me the ink, then it flipping just got it all over my fingers, and then it, I dropped it and it went on my pants and my gaming chair. So that was lovely. After all that. Uh, that's a darker brown. Okay, we're gonna wash the brush, dry it, and pat it dry. Okay, now we're gonna look. We're gonna look. Where are we gonna look? We're gonna go here. This is a darker. Ooh, excuse me, a darker brown. Not like, like this guy. Ever so lightly. I'm just going to go over this top line and then this bottom line. I need more. Uh, where did I? Well, I mean, it's just regular. We're, I'm just using regular brown and the tip of the brush ever so slightly. You could also just tap as well and then just move over and then just keep tapping instead of sliding it uh, just to make sure that it doesn't create too big of a line or it doesn't go down on you by accident. Alright, it does go the line does go through here. Right, there's that, and then there's a line here as well. Hold on, I need more paint. Just like that. Um, we're gonna take the same color as the ship here. We're just gonna go over this. Just fix that up, cover it up. And then we're gonna go right in here as well. I need a little bit more. There's that. So that's basically. Oh wait, no, no, I'm, I lied. I lied. Wait, I missed a part. Right here. Oh, and that needs to be a bit darker. Right here. Ever so gently, there's a handrail here. There we go. Now the main body of the ship is done. So basically all that's left is to do up here in the sails, oh, in the crow's nest. Darken this, the end of this line. And there we go, now we have a rope. I'm also gonna take the same color and we're gonna do those planks now since I have the right color. And we're just gonna tap ever so gently, just like this. I'm estimating this is where the
planks were, I believe. Again, keeping the br this brush, it's a square brush, you want to keep the tip and the bristles at the end of it as flat as possible. There we are. Now we have the planks. And then we can also, if we come down here, there are also planks that curve. They're just barely visible in the picture. And we'll add in those as well. Get some more paint. Uh, are they on the other side? No, they are not. But they do continue. Very lightly down this side of the boat. It's just a touch. You don't want too much, or else the line will be too thick and it will look sloppy. Just realized I could also use my palette knife as well because you can actually just get paint on the tip, the flat edge of it, and then you can just tap it as well. That also allows you to do the same exact thing. See, this is looking pretty good. Pretty good. I'm going to add one in right here. This thick line goes all the way through here. We're gonna do that. Okay. Same thing again. We're, we're gonna keep doing this. Just a touch. Just a touch. We're going to do one more, one more right here. Ooh, that's a bit thick. Whoops. Right, and I want to continue these just add little lines here to signify that there's also boards here just so it doesn't look like this weird gap as well that I don't think that's in the image unless if it is then it, they're like really really light so you can't see it so that's that so those are boards there we go um, here let's just I'm gonna quickly check now we're gonna do the opposite effect here. So see how we have dark lines to represent the boards for the light colored wood? Well now we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna get we're gonna get our unbleached titanium. Um we're gonna just take a touch of that. Just gonna get it right on the tip of the brush. I'm gonna flatten my brush because I just cleaned it. Fix the tip. There we go. Go into it just a touch and then dab it to get the excess paint off on your palette. And then we're just going to barely we barely want these little lines to be visible.
just like that. There we go. I'm actually going to add one here and there as well. There we are. Okay. It's looking pretty good. Pretty good. I'm going to add a few of these. Here and there, just these ones are going to be really light because technically there aren't any that you can see but with the naked eye on this side. That's, you know, I'm going to go back over to the other side and you know, I'm just going to do black as well because that looks 10 times better and I didn't really have enough paint when I mixed it for this side because I used the blue and the black so it was a very small amount of paint so I was kind of just scrubbing it on there this looks much much smoother because it's the paint is wet and it gives me a smooth edge as well which I quite like uh, this guy doesn't have a corner there we go. Uh, we're now going to do these little, I'm assuming these are crow's nests. Um, I mean, they look like crow's nests. I don't know what else they would be if they're not crow's nests. So uh, we're going to do those now. I'm actually going to stay with this brush that I literally just put back because it's better. Um, we're going to go in with some brown. We're getting little stragglers right here if you can see that. Basically, where the not all the bristles on this brush are stuck together in the shape that they were manufactured as, so it's giving me weird. So they get they have paint on the ends of them, and they're just basically putting paint where I don't want paint. Okay, so. We are using this color here. You can't really see it that well. It kind of looks like a taupe color, but it's actually more yellowish brown than it is taupe. And that's going to go in these little gaps right here on the crow's nest. So we're going to do that right now. I don't really like how that looks. Uh, I think there's too much of the brown showing. Oh, that's starting to look sort of better. And we're going to do the same over here. Um, so we're going to get brown. Again, right, we're going to take our brush, come up to here, there we go, uh, up here, there's like a mini crow's nest, I don't know what this is, because it's kind of blocked by the other um, sails, so they kind of got in the way, so I don't know what they, that really is. But from there, we're going to then rinse our brush. We're going to go back to that other lighter, taupey yellow color. I'm going to get that on the brush. And we're going to fill in the little white spaces. And there we go. There we go. All right. There's the top of the mast. It's done. Uh, let's see, uh, let's check the image. What else is there to do? Uh, we can go over these, just lightly tap the flagpoles with the brush, with just brown paint. 
we can get just a nice straight thin line. That's all we want. And there we go. Just like that. I'm gonna fix this one there. It should go up just a tad more. Alright, there. I think it is time to do the sales. Who's ready to do sales? Alright, who's ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? I hope so because we're doing them. We're doing them right now. Uh, I'm gonna change the camera angle. We're gonna zoom out. Look at that. That looks so nice, right? That looks almost like the picture. Almost like the picture. We're gonna go back to the picture. Now, what you wanna do. Here, I need more brown for this if I'm gonna do this. Uh, not a lot, but I'm gonna need some. So, take our paint, paint knife. You wanna go into the brown and the unbleached titanium. And we're gonna go, we're gonna go, actually we can do this up here because this paint is dry, this blue. And we want to just sort of mix these together. I'm actually gonna add a bit of white as well. Come on, white. White, let's go. Come on, I know you're all dried up and dead, but seriously, come on. We need something. We need this to be as light as possible. Not too light, but... color now we're, we're adding a lot of unbleached titanium here and then I need white Hold on, I need to grab a different color. I need, I need another color. Um, what color do we need here? Um, I'm adding a color to the color board. We're adding... Hold on, can I get my thumb out of the way? Naples yellow. It's a light yellow. Um, we're just going to add that. We're going to put it next to the blue. No, white. Come on. I know you're almost dead. But seriously, come on. Alright, I'm going to wipe off my knife and just wipe this off, right? Now, see how we have, we have this color here? Well, let's switch over to the image, let's look. Yeah, it's about that color. Now, what I'm about to do, you might think is crazy, but you know what? I do it all the time. We're going to come over here now watch see you take your knife in your hand and you want to come down like this and that's all you do now if you look all right if you see here if you look right on the end you see this that is just a, it's a little bead of paint we're gonna take that and we're gonna go back up to the canvas all right right this little bead of paint is all you need watch put it you apply a little pressure and you pull down and you can literally for that just apply it right to the canvas I can even transfer it down here if I wanted to. See? Uh, so basically, what we're going to do now, I'm going to take some of that white and we're going to mix it with that color we just made. And we're not going to mix it very thoroughly. And I'm actually going to grab some Naples yellow because I want some of that, as well as some unbleached titanium. And a tad of brown 
and we're gonna mix it and we're not gonna mix it normally watch well obviously we are gonna mix it uh, I need a bit more brown in there but basically what we're gonna do we're just gonna take it so it's partially mixed and then we're gonna ah there you go see that this is what I was talking about earlier if we look we get it ah there you go we get those streaks here I'm gonna, sorry I didn't mean to just slap the camera I want to call it that but basically this it provides different colors see it's just stripes in there so instead of just regular whatever paint that was a lot um, basically you can just it you can keep those stripes you don't have to mix it all the way and it gives you that nice blend and what I can then do we can then take a different brush I'm gonna use a different brush this time I'm gonna use the this brush here it's a, just a straight flat brush and we just you just pull down and then you can also pull up to fill up top in as well and basically that pulls all the colors if you just pull straight or if you curve it a bit it basically it grabs all the colors just how they were put onto the paper and it just pulls them you just pull them and basically so then you keep those streaks as well the little lines in there those variations it makes it the painting look better it actually also makes it look like it's made oil, like oil paints which is a win-win this one could use more brown so we can add brown to our brush and look if we just dab it here and there look at there there we go now you got a little bit of brown streaks in there Oh, do here too. Oh, that, those are a lot of streaks. Oh, heck yeah. And then you can just pull down. And then you can even pull it up. And that is how I did the sails on that boat up on the wall behind this, uh, this easel. did not fill in those edges and corners over here. Hold on. Don't forget the edges in the corners. You don't want to leave any empty spaces. Oh, you know what? We haven't touched up in the middle here in a while and this stuff is probably drying. I think that's the sails done for right now. Um, but what we can do, we can rinse off the brush, dab it on there. 
Now what we want to do, what we want to do now, um, you want to take, uh, you can stick with the same brush or you can switch out brush, your brush, but I'm going to keep mine and just go into the brown paint and just, just regular brown and then just, and you just want to go to the corners of the sails. And just paint them brown, just a little. The bot, the bottom corners are more have more brown in them than the top ones. Just, just like this. All right, so that's that there. So now what you want to do? is you want to rinse off your brush first uh, dry it obviously you don't need water and now you want to take the same color you had before the same color of the sails you want to just kind of blend in that brown kind of just lightly go over some spots where the brown of the corners are especially this guy because I went too heavy on the brown. Uh, I think we need lighter up here. Uh, too light. Okay, so I'm back. Camera died again. Um, so that's why everything looks... There's more done now. Um, also got to be quick because camera battery could die again very very soon so um I'm going to wrap this up by saying that all that's left to do is to fill in the white areas with blue sky that weren't filled in because I didn't get in close with the big brush before I'm doing that now with a detailed brush a small brush um, and then from there, I'm going to paint the British flag and then the, I, f I don't remember what one this one is. It's a white flag with the red uh, plus sign on it. Um, and then I'm going to add in clouds and then do some waves here, some whitewash. Uh, white water, not whitewash. Um, and then from there, clouds as well. And then that's a finished painting. So I'm hopefully I can get all most of that done in time before it dies again. Never mind, it's about to die again. <laughs> uh hmm. See you in a little bit, I guess, because I'm gonna say this now before it stops recording on me. Also, I can see the lines underneath the paint, so I can go over that with uh, the pen afterwards, so um, I got lucky. I think I'm going to finish the painting tonight, and I will record a part tomorrow of showing showcasing it. That way, it's also, we have daylight as well, instead of just regular lamp light, which I kind of don't like. Oh, we can actually see what the painting actually looks like in regular lighting. I should also note, when making clouds, um, you can take the corner of a brush. I recommend a bigger brush like this, opposed to this little one. And you take the corner and you go into the white paint and you kind of just make little swirls like this. So here, I'll show you quickly before this dies, so you can just like that. See? You got a nice little cloud right there. Happy little cloud. And we can do big ones, too. Here, I'll get a little bit more paint.
And boom, we got a bigger cloud. Isn't that nice? I'm going to leave it here until tomorrow. I will finish this up now, off camera. Uh, so you you have everything you need. You've seen everything else. Um, you know how to make clouds, so I showed you that before my PC and my camera die. So I will see you tomorrow once this is done and we can go over uh, what else was done tonight. Hello, um, I'd like to say it has been a few days, possibly a week, since I recorded um, the main video of the Mayflower painting, but so I've been waiting for when I've had some free time to show you guys how it turned out. Um, I went back, I just painted the flags uh, I said I would. I showed you guys how to do clouds beforehand. Um, I don't recall, I don't think I did tell you guys how to make waves. Um, basically if you took a small brush with some white paint and you kind of just dab some of it off, you don't want it like a glob of white paint on, and you just take a corner of the brush and you just tap right here, you can get little white water uh, like waves here, same down here. Um, and then all I did was to do all the different rigging with the ropes and stuff. I used a uh, Sharpie pen um, to just do all the fine lines and to get everything looking ship shape, no pun intended. Um, and then I actually I also cut the paper to size. You can cut it to any size you want. I just cut it down so it was more like movable and manageable for me to move it around than just this giant poster. Um, but yes, this is the finished product, as you can see. So here we are. Here's the finished product. Um, I also, I signed my name down here in the bottom, Black Sharpie. Um, I've switched over to using a red Sharpie. I usually use a red Sharpie when signing my pieces now, as opposed to using paint, how I usually used to do it because uh, I would end up with a big ginormous thing like this big, big giant letters that didn't actually, um, didn't really stick out very well. Well, they did on some paintings, uh, but they would be kind of like splotchy so the paint, it wouldn't be like full like lettering, you know, if you understand what I'm saying. But that's that. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you all very much for watching and as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye.